Hello, and welcome to our presentation on the CABC's latest report on labor force equality, where we've decided to dive into conversations, stereotypes, and perspectives being expressed about gender and work online in the South African context. My name is Hunter Barron, and I'm joined by my colleague who will introduce himself, Kyle Janser. Thank you, Hunter. My name is Carl Janser, and I'm a researcher at the Center for Analytics and Behavioral Change. Thank you very much, Carl. Let's dive right in. So what is labor force equality? In summary, we have used the term labor force equality to refer to gender parity in employment across all levels, sectors, and types of work in South Africa. This ranges from unpaid care work, such as rearing children, to the CEOs of major blue chip companies. The International Labour Organization defines a labour force as the entire population of working age people in a country. In South Africa, StatsSA defines the working age as those aged from 15 to 65 years old. What is labour? Well, we are defining labour through a broadened definition of work. The definition of work we have used comes from a research article published by Van der Laan and colleagues in 2023. Work here can be thought of as an innate human function, which informs an individual's purpose and role. It is relational and manifested through various socialization processes, deriving meaning from conscious thought, activity, and or effort. Work is further driven by personal and societal codes of ethos and praxis, and is manifest through the expression of one's work and social service. Work furthermore influences well-being. What is our rationale? Well, we set out to understand the perceptions, attitudes, determinants, and stereotypes which govern the relationship between work and society in the South African context. Our vehicle to drive this understanding was public social media, particularly the social media platform X, formerly Twitter. Through internal consultation, desktop, and academic research, we defined three main focus areas for our report. The first focus area, which we named labor force equality, focused on the underlying perceptions, norms, and roles which may drive gender disparity in the labor force. Our second focus area, defining work, drew from Van der Laan and colleagues' definition. Here, we sought to understand how individuals defined work and which aspects of labor they considered constituted work with a particular emphasis on sex work and unpaid care work. Our final focus area, regulations, sex markers, and pay gaps, sought to understand how individuals spoke about and perceived labor legislation and gendered or sex-based workplace issues, such as the gender pay gap, maternity leave, paternity leave, and menstrual leave. I will now hand over to Kyle, who will take us through some of the high-level data insights and the identification of various constructs and associated vectors. Thank you, Hunter. I'll start off with our high-level data insights before proceeding to the constructs and vectors. The reporting period was from the 1st of January 2024 to the 1st of April 2024. Our analytics tool identified more than 160,000 mentions related to work and gender. Of these, 91% of all mentions constituted retweets indicating the conversation predominantly consisted of retweets. Further, more than 52,000 unique accounts contributed to the conversation, an average mention volume of three mentions per account. Over here, we have a line graph indicating the peaks in conversation. You'd note four distinct peaks. Peak A, which is the largest spike in the conversation, relates to an EFF member of Parliament, Naledi Chirwa, releasing a public apology on the basis of having failed to attend the 2024 budget speech. She attributed her lack of attendance to her child being ill. Peak B was driven by conversation relating to men's worth in employment and receiving an income. Peak C concerned Banyana Banyana's win over the Nigerian football team and an impersonation of a medical practitioner. Peak D was not relevant to our focus area and concerned general conversation around the 2024 national elections in South Africa. We now proceed to discuss the constructs and vectors apparent from the data set and the subsequent report. Constructs are areas of interest for further analysis and interventions 
and maybe like in the broad focus area where vectors are pathways or entries into the intervention. We identify three primary constructs and these are changing, shifting and deconstructing traditional gender roles, evolution of what constitutes work and women in the workplace. Under the first construct, we find two vectors, namely traditional and religious ideas around gender roles and disruption of the family and family values. Under the second construct, our vectors are stigma around sex workers and unpaid care works characterization as not work. Finally, under women in the workplace, there is progressive legislation and policies such as menstrual and maternity leave women not being as competent as men, and intersectional pay gaps. I'll now hand over to Hunter to dig a bit deeper into the first two constructs. The following discussions of core constructs focuses on perceptions underlying gender gaps in employment. Ideas which sought to speak against these perceptions have been folded into recommendations at the end of this presentation. Diving further into our first construct, we identify that a polarized conversation was evident, which concerned gender roles and women in the workforce. This construct could be further divided into two vectors. Vector one, traditional and religious ideas around gender roles, represents a segment of the conversation which focused on the identification and preference for gender roles which ascribed roles reserved for men and reserved for women. Ideas noted here included that men should provide financially for women, that men were defined in relation to their financial power, and that women should stay home to raise the next generation of children. Vector 2, disruption of the family and family values, focused on a more traditionalist, conservative viewpoint, which sought to make the case that there was an unseen enemy seeking to destroy families, particularly black families. This was tied ostensibly to the idea that a shadow world government or new world order sought to increase tax revenue and make individuals subservient to capital. We further noted that individuals referenced feminism and social media as what they considered to be a social contagion, which disrupted traditional family values and engendered a greed for wealth in women at the expense of strong families traditionally headed by men. Our second construct, defining work, also hold two vectors. The first, concerned with perceptions of sex work, were marred in deep stigma around the sex industry. Moral and religious tenets were mobilized in opposition to discussion, which sought to make the case that the sex industry should be regulated to protect sex workers. We further noted a conflation between protections afforded to the sex industry and the belief that regulation would motivate young people to enter the sex trade or bolster sex trafficking and drug abuse within the country. The final vector concerned unpaid care work. We drew from the International Labour Organization's definition, which defines unpaid care work as a category of labour inclusive of unpaid domestic services for own final use within households, the provision of unpaid caregiving services to household members, and the provision of community services and help to other households. We noted that the unpaid care work conversation was closely related to the idea of traditional gender roles and the division of labor, which rested on the belief that men should go out to work and earn money while women take care of the family. We further noted that some mentions drew on the practice of Lobola, comparing Lobola to an auction and drawing on biblical ideas of gender and labor. Finally, we noted that individuals identified work within the home, which they determined as masculine such as cleaning the yard, protecting the home and family, or fixing household items, implying that there was work which individuals designated feminine, such as cooking and cleaning. I'll hand back to Kyle to take us through the third construct and recommendations. The third and final construct can be divided into three distinct vectors. The first vector concerned progressive legislation and policies, where maternity and menstrual leave were engaged in a positive manner in order to effect change, opposition to it was largely structured around productivity. For example, that no company can afford to lose significant amount of days and still pay the individual while they are not working. 
The second vector concerned the competence of women. Here we found some positive posts in support of women trailblazing in male-dominated industries. However, we also found some posts questioning the competence of women. A high traction post stated that one drunk man is more intelligent than three women with PhD and another question why men cannot perceive women as role models. It was noted that there is an underlying bias preventing them from doing so, this bias being that women can never be the best at their craft. Finally, the third vector concerns pay gaps. A lot of posts raised the issue of pay gaps did so through videos or news stories. On the other hand, some qualified the gender pay gap by noting that things like maternity leave and household care work takes women away from their jobs and thus impacts on their salaries. We now proceed to recommendations. In religion, we now proceed to recommendations. In relation to gender roles, it is suggested that positive messaging be employed to stimulate conversation around the historical nature of these roles and how they can be reimagined in a more equitable context. Around family values, here yeah, one must promote conversation around women's independence and equality as well as the diverse understandings of what constitutes a family. On gendered ability, conversations should seek to understand why women are valued less seem to be less competent and intelligent than men. Efforts should be directed at understanding the rejection of progressive policies and legislations and sensitize individuals to their importance. Conversation around sex workers should steer clear of moral or ethical dilemmas and instead focus on how to protect and give them agency. Discussions around unpaid care work should unpack the term as well as discuss equal participation in care work. For pay gaps, discussions must be carefully considered and seek to bring in a logical approach to explaining the complexities of marginalization at work. Thank you. If you'd like to read the full report and dive a bit deeper into the insights presented in this presentation, please follow the link on this slide or search for the CABC's website at cabc.org.za.